Hi. Today is my birthday. My name is William James Lindbergh, and I'm a, a poet, I guess. I don't know. I work a lot of hours these days, so it doesn't seem like I'm much of anything. Well, it's my birthday, and um, I bought a bunch of little small bottles of liquor along with this bottle of uh, tequila. A Shinako sh uh, sh Blanco. It's a silver tequila. It is really clear and it is really smooth. And um, so I'm going to do uh, a little taste test of, of very familiar whiskeys. This one, Seagram 7. Seagram, Seagram 7. I have this at my workplace. Uh, in, we sell it in the bar and uh, Jim Beam. We just started selling this one recently. And um, this is Pendleton Midnight. Now we don't sell this, but we do sell Pendleton. And, um, anyways, just com going to compare them to each other. The Seagram's has a real sour and, um, but also has a real sweet kind of a flavor to it. Jim Beam is sweet, but it has a more pronounced of that sour. It's that sour mash. That sour mash, you can really taste the sourness of it. Now this Pendleton, which is a Canadian blended whiskey, is way sweeter. The the, the sour tones are way are more um, more subdued. So let's just try that on on a little bit on ice, because when you put um, liquor whiskey on ice it tends to bring out a lot of the it brings out a lot more of the flavors a lot more of those those sweeter notes and it sort of starts to uh, it diminishes the the sours get kind of diminished in it the Pendleton um, Midnight It makes it way more drinkable. You can drink it really super fast when you do it that way. And I'm going to go with the next one, which will go to the um, Jim Beam. I was trying to find the black label because I've heard that the black label. Is... Uh oh, I dropped that one. Um, oh, I guess I've had a lot to drink here. Yeah. Well, there's still some of it left, more than half of it's left. That's not so bad. I got some of it on my socks. And so, Jim Beam. Well, that's that's way tastier than that. Um, and that midnight, the Pendleton Midnight, when it's way tastier than the Canadian whiskey when you put it on ice. Mmm. Mm. I bought another whiskey, but I don't, I'm not gonna, I got it the other day. It was uh, made in Flomath, Oregon. And um, it's tasty, except that it it um, tastes like it's been tinctured rather than barrel aged. And these are all, I believe, barrel aged liquors. And the barrel age aging process makes them so much better. So this was the the Seagrams. Um. 
I like buying these liquors in in the little smalls because you know you don't have to carry it have to buy a whole fifth or a whole pint because I don't really drink them all that often I'd rather have a more if I buy a, a fifth I would rather buy a more higher quality liquor than than these so these standards these stand you know these are really quality quality tasting liquors they taste good enough you know but uh, they're not as good as let's say uh, my favorite whiskey of all time which is Knob Creek and it's a rye and or even like Elijah Craig which is the last whiskey I bought and um, I find that a, a really good mixer for whiskey is Blue Sky Cola. And Blue Skies, which are cane sugar sweetened, and you can pick them up at like health food stores and so forth. And I'm not getting any money or anything from Blue Sky uh, to, for endorsing their products. I'm not really, this is an unofficial endorsement, but I like these, this organic cola as a mixer over Coca-Cola or Pepsi. I mean, the, the fructose corn syrup, syrup sweetened colas are, I think, are just crap in comparison to this Blue Sky because it has a lot of other flavors. It doesn't have any caffeine in it either, so we're going to go with the, the Jim Beam next, which I have left of the bottle that I just dropped on the floor and spilled it on my sock and so forth. And um, this in comparison. And then, um, just to give you an idea of what it tastes like. And so, so after this, I'm going to go do some painting. I'm not like an expert painter. You know, I, I showed you like a, a video last week I put out of, a, of me doing some painting. I've been painting less than a year. It's something that um, I've always wanted to learn how to do. And when I was younger, I battled with a lot of self-confidence issues and self-esteem issues, and I still battle with my self-esteem because you know, as I, when I was young, I had a um, learning disability. I still have a learning disability. It's called uh, centralized audio processing disorder. And when when I was born, my brain couldn't hear, and so I was delayed in talking, and I was delayed in reading, I was delayed in learning. I was delayed in social interaction, and there's still a lot of things that I haven't figured out yet, you know, like how to tell if someone's flirting with me. I never could figure that out, and and uh, the times that I that I thought somebody was flirting with me, I turned out it turned out to be dead wrong, and and then when they were, I was completely oblivious to it. So there are a lot of social cues and things that I never I never seem to pick up on because of the um, centralized audio processing disorder, or as it's called today, is, is audio processing disorder. And um, it has a, a, there's a flavor in this cola that I just can't describe. I just love it. It's, maybe it's like nutmeg. I don't know. It's, um, it's kind of a, a nutty kind of a flavor. And it really brings out the best in a liquor. And even if you were like to mix it with, let's say, uh, like a cognac. And I have a cognac here that I bought at the Dallas liquor store while, while I was getting my birthday liquors and so forth. And this one is not as good as, as Hennessy. It's not as smooth as Hennessy. It's, uh, uh, it's pretty rough. And so I don't think that I would ever buy a bottle of this. Yeah, it's it's not it's a it's 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 like a pretty rough tasting whiskey, but it's not a whiskey. You know, cognac is a brandy that has been um, made in cognac, France, and so it's a location thing. Mm. You know, it's just it's just hard to this when you add. Uh, that liquor to that 
soda pop it this is so tasty I gotta give it a try I guess this is turning out to be a long video I'll probably cut some parts out of it and do some of those jump cuts like you see in many other other things so I'm gonna pour in just a little bit of this um, Seagram 7 and put and try that with the um, cola and then probably like four o'clock in the morning it's like 325 now I'm gonna do some painting and um, try another film the painting but I'll have to charge the camera up first for a little while so yeah it's different it tastes it tastes different in combination with that cola Mm. I've got to be very careful. You got that. Now, you know, while I'm kind of got a good buzz going on, maybe I'll do some. I was writing, trying to do some some poetry this afternoon um, before I went to the liquor store and was sipping on some um, some espresso while at a uh, waiting for. A, the barber place to uh, the line to thin down and so I got this nice short haircut you know my hairline's thinning so um, I gotta keep my hair short now because I'm what 49 today here are some words that I phrases that I wrote down from the from this uh, free newspaper that I got yesterday um, when I went to a movie took my mother to a movie in Salem and at that artsy theater and I think Salem's cinema Salem cinema yeah I think that's the place it shows foreign films and other films that don't make it into the uh, main theaters and I wanted a beer with my movie but they didn't have any beer on tap there so I went to a convenience store and bought a bottle of Gilgamesh beer and smuggled it into the theater and um, and drank it while the while the show was going. I, drank, I think I drank it out of a paper cup because I didn't want to <clears throat> seem like I was drinking it out of the paper bag. Anyway, here are some words that I came I found in, in this in this uh, paper. The seeds of power are gaining ground, undermining how far we have come as a society. The climate we live in highlights that facts are faulty, dirty. We respond to the madhouse with, sh with praises that Trump and Jesus are God. Trump is Jesus like God. Trump trumps over Jesus and God. Trump is our God. Trump espouses the Holy Trinity of America, that Holy Trinity of oil, weapons, and money. Because oil, weapons, and money makes the world go around and around and around until the clock winds down to zero. And that is where we're headed with this climate of fear, this climate that power is everything, that the people, like cats, are subjugated, are subjugated but to the will of the masters. And these are the deep questions that we ask today, Trump and Jesus. Is that for real? Trump is Jesus? Some people believe this is true. And Trump trumps Jesus because he as a demagogue is superior 
in his own reality. The Holy Trinity of America is oil, money, and weapons. The Holy Trinity of America is oil, weapons, and money. The Holy Trinity of America is oil, money, and weapons. The seeds of power are gaining ground. The seeds of power are undermining the people. The seeds of power respond to the people in the madhouse separated into a human male and female made in the image of God. And that's all.